Yeah, so uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm Fyodor Famin. I'm a third year PhD candidate in the Department of Joining and Assessment at the Helmgol Centrum Gestalt in northern Germany. And uh, the topic of my talk is the high cycle fatigue behavior of laser welded titanium 64. As far as you probably know, fatigue is a design criterion of modern airplanes. And in the light of uh, modern tendencies towards fuel efficiency and weight reductions, um, uh, fatigue and damage tolerance, uh, structural reliability of uh, the stiffened and especially welded um, components has, be has become of great concern. Uh, therefore, in this context, uh, this work was undertaken with the aim to provide a set of guidelines, a set of methodologies to improve the fatigue behavior of the welded structures and somehow to extend the fatigue life of uh, welded butt joints. So, uh, yeah, uh, I will start with a short introduction of laser welding technique, a few words about uh, TIE 64 titanium alloy, then we'll, we'll move on to the main part of my talk, namely five different approaches, how we can um, prolongate the fatigue life of the butt joint. And finally, uh, I will um, focus on the mechanism of internal crack initiation uh, when we apply surface smoothening technique techniques, we shift the crack origin from the surface to the subsurface. And this is um, a very relevant topic. Um, then in the last slide I will uh, briefly discuss this uh, in a few words. So um, let's start with laser beam welding. Um, this type of welding has been around for more than 30 years uh, from now. Um, and uh, it provides significant practical advantages uh, compared to conventional joining techniques like productivity, flexibility, no need for high vacuum in comparison to electron beam welding. And uh, uh, yeah, various materials can be welded and in our department we uh, are particularly, I've, I'm focusing on laser welding of titanium alloys and it's quite a relevant topic. For example, now we're within a European project we're developing laser welding technique for uh, T-joints uh, and this um, it will be one of the steps in manufacturing of the tail section of Airbus A380. Uh, so uh, laser welding of titanium alloys is now being used in the industry. However, fatigue behavior of these joints is relatively uh, poor. Uh, so when we uh, take a closer look at the weld microstructure and micro hardness, uh, then we uh, usually obtain uh, this typical uh, profile of micro hardness uh, across the weld seam. So due to very high cooling rates and um, we have uh, diffusionless martensitic transformation in case of titanium 64 alloy. And as a result, we always obtain acicular alpha prime martensite, this type of uh, morphology. Uh, the problem is that this hardening effect, which we have in the weld zone, uh, leads to formation of very brittle and, and uh, therefore notch sensitive uh, microstructure in the weld seam. If we combine this Brittle, brittle microstructure with the weld defects. Uh, this results, of course, in very low um, <coughs> fatigue strength. So uh, this term, uh, this, this situation is uh, called overmatched. So we have overmatched laser um, uh, beam welded joint in terms of static, um, um, in terms of tensile uh, properties. That means that in case of uh, tensile uh, testing, when the cyclic load is applied, the fracture uh, always uh, occur in the base material uh, because the, the weld seam is hardened, it's stronger and it, it provides a shielding effect and protects the weld seam from, from the fracture. And um, if we look at this uh, green curve, this curve represents the um, uh, stress strain cur curve of the fully martensitic morphology. So we can see uh, after high cooling rates we have uh, very brittle morphology with uh, is stronger up to 1,200 uh, MPA um, uh, UTS. However, elongation and break is uh, lower than five uh, percent. Um, yeah, so it's quite impressive result that, that that the weld is stronger than the base material. However, the results of fatigue testing are not so encouraging, 
and uh, we uh, welded uh, titanium 64 sheets of 2.6 millimeter thickness and then we extracted fatigue specimens, flat specimens and subjected to cyclic loading and we were interested in the high cycle fatigue regime up to 10 uh, to 7 load cycles. Uh, this, curve, uh, this, this plot shows us the comparison of the fatigue behavior of, of the base material with different types of microstructure with that of the uh, weld. So here, kind of messy, we have a lot of uh, points, but um, the thing that I would like to emphasize here that um, when um, in the as-received condition uh, of titanium-64 base material, we have around 720 um, MPA fatigue limit. Um, uh, if we quench this, um, uh, the specimens when we have fully martensitic morphology, the unnotched fatigue limit reaches uh, up to 900, 950 MPA, but uh, in case of uh, laser as welded condition, we have very poor uh, fatigue properties, and the reason for these are um, uh, surface stress concentrators. We always have this geometry shape imperfections due to very fast process of laser welding. We have these so-called underfills or weld tours, reinforcements, and uh, this uh, kind of a, a stress razors. Uh, this, of course, leads to premature crack formation and very <coughs> low fatigue limit of around 200 MPA. Yeah? So, uh, yeah, this is a clear evidence of the effect of surface defects. We can see that the fatigue limit was lo uh, lower by more than a factor of five. Mm, uh, therefore, we, uh, this work, uh, we started to um, think how which, by which method we can increase this fatigue limit and to up to the base material level. So, uh, the first uh, idea that uh, comes to our... To, to it's quite a conventional uh, process, actually, <laughs> machining. Uh, we can just uh, mill or grind the surface and uh, remove the surface layer with weld underfills in order to obtain very perfectly smooth uh, surface of the specimen. In this case, it has a, a pronounced um, positive effect on the fatigue limit. And, and um, in the machine joints, uh, achieve approximately uh, 500 um, MPA at 10 uh, to 7 load cycles. Uh, yeah, so um, this, it's quite, this plot is very representative because we have here um, a different curve representing the effect of different types of defects. Uh, yeah, by the way, all, all the machine joints were fractured in the fusion zone of the weld. Um, and um, the same, the same um, plot, the same SN curves are shown here uh, schematically for simplicity. So um, the highest fatigue strength that could be uh, obtained uh, for titanium-64 uh, alloy is the um, unnotched fatigue strength um, mm. after, um, after laser welding. Uh, so uh, this, uh, um, with the fatigue limit up to 950 MPA, uh, the lowest curve corresponds to the as-welded condition with surface defects. So effect of surface defects would be characterized by the notch factor of around 4.5. In, ca in case of machine joints with a perfectly smooth surface, we have internal defects, internal discontinuous, uh, discontinuities, uh, and the effect of these internal defects is uh, considerably lower than that of the surface defects. Uh, nevertheless, the SN curve of the machined joints is located slightly lower than that of the base material. And that's uh, the most important thing because it opens us a gap for potential improvement. So the aim is somehow to um, mm -hmm. increase the uh, fatigue limit of the machine joint up to the base material level. Because um, from the structural integrity point of view, it's, um, it's unfeasible to have the fatigue limit higher than that of the base material. So uh, yeah, um, we took a close look at the fracture surface. And um, with a high magnification, we have typical fish eye pattern or fracture surface due to internal crack initiation in case of machine joints. All the machine joints fracture uh, from internal pores, <coughs> which is the uh, inevitable result of laser welding. And uh, fisheye uh, mm. morphology normally consists of uh, optically dark area with a rough morphology and a uh, smooth area around it. And uh, this makes uh, this topic particularly uh, especially relevant uh, because uh, similar fracture type types were observed in very high cycle fatigue of steels of titanium alloys in additively manufactured components where porosity is also a big, um, uh, very important issue and uh, uh, everywhere where we have uh, internal defects. So um, 
Um, after we understood that the reason for fracture are uh, internal uh, welding induced porosity, we decided probably we can somehow modify the microstructure of the fusion zone in order to um, increase uh, the uh, crack growth resistivity of, of the fusion zone. And we, uh, mm, we investigated various types of heat treatment in the temperature range between uh, 550 and 920 degrees and Celsius, and um, we, we published actually a comprehensive analysis on the microstructure and the micro-hardness of uh, uh, all these types of post-world heat treatments. I, I won't go deeply into details. The main point here is that um, obviously uh, with increasing temperature we have grain coarsening and uh, the um, martensitic decomposi deco decomposition and uh, gradual transformation of the martensitic very fine acicular morphology into lamella coarse-grained um, microstructure. And uh, then we investigated what's the effect of heat treatments uh, on the fatigue behavior. There are, again, there are a lot of points. However, there is one clear trend that I would like to emphasize here that um, uh, if the annealing temperature is lower than 800 degrees Celsius, there is no effect on the fatigue behavior. However, when we have this uh, very coarse lamer lamella morphology, this type of microstructure has a pronounced, um, has a big positive impact on, on the fatigue behavior and um, uh, fatigue limit could be increased by around 10% up to 550 MPA. Um, then we, uh, we um, polish the fracture samples until um, the plane with the pore in order to compare the crack pass of the martensitic morphology and after the heat treatment. And we found out that in, indeed uh, when we uh, apply a high temperature annealing more than 800 degrees Celsius, uh, then in case of this coarse grain morphology, the crack path is significantly more deflected and um, apparently this is the main reason of um, uh, this crack deflection um, uh, increase the resistivity of the microstructure against the uh, crack growth and uh, leads to 10% uh, increase of, um, in the fatigue strength. So uh, yeah, the, uh, the third methodology that we uh, investigated is la laser remelting. The main incentive under this, um, this approach was that machinability of titanium alloys is very low. Therefore, machining the well surface is quite very time consuming and uh, is associated with high cost. That's why, that's why uh, non-contact non -contact, um, method of surface smoothening ba uh, on, based on laser uh, is a quite promising technology and we use the same laser source. We just defocus laser and, apply and pass the well seam and it has uh, a big um, pronounced smoothening effect, effect as you can see in the cross sections and uh, the fatigue limit of the laser remelted joints is even higher than that than when we compare it with uh, machine joints. Um, yeah, so uh, the fatigue limit uh, was increased by uh, almost a factor of three and um, however the main drawback of this methodology is high heat input during the remelting process because we defocus the laser. Nevertheless, that's, uh, that's the maximum fatigue limit that we could obtain by any type of post-weld treatment uh, techniques. Um, the fourth uh, methodology I would like to um, present to you is laser shock pinning. I won't show you any experimental details. Um, yesterday, Sergei presented to you the um, uh, experimental procedure and the sketch of the process. Um, the main uh, experimental parameters are uh, shown in the table. We pinned the area around the weld plus minus uh, 10 millimeters and uh, the residual stresses were measured by the incremental hole drilling technique. We can see that uh, um, um, laser shock pinning yields uh, compressive residual stresses in the surface layer up to 0 0.5 nine millimeters. However, here in the middle part of the joint, we have tensile residual stress. That's a very important issue that we, um, we, uh, I will emphasize it further. And uh, two scenarios were investigated. So we applied uh, laser shock pinning on the machine joints after machining on the smooth um, uh, welds and we applied laser shock pinning um, directly after the laser beam welding on the S welded joints. Let's start with the laser shock pinning on the S welded condition and if we, uh, as we can see the fatigue limit could be increased by uh, almost a factor of two so compressive residual stresses um, significantly suppress the, crack in the surface crack initiation and growth. growth. Uh, so all these joints were fractured in, in, from the surface so the, the effect of residual stresses was not enough to shift 
the crack initiation from surface to the subsurface. Yeah, but nevertheless, the fatigue limit was uh, almost close to the uh, machine condition. And um, uh, the second scenario is the application of laser shock pinning um, uh, treatment on the <coughs> machine joints. And um, <coughs> however, the first fatigue trials demonstrated the, the, the effect of um, compressive residual stresses on the internal crack <coughs> initiation was not so pronounced and was comparable with the fatigue scatter. That's why viable plotting, uh, this approach was used in order to uh, distinguish the uh, effect from laser shock pinning from the um, uh, fatigue scatter. Uh, 16 specimens were tested at the same stress level of uh, 550 MPA. That's the typical stress range for uh, high, in the high side of fatigue regime. And um, um, as you can see, all the points f uh, fall into a straight line. That means that the fatigue scatter could be very well predicted by the Weibull distribution, and we can see um, uh, we can see that the characteristic life was increased by um, uh, almost a factor of three. However, uh, the slope was uh, also changed, and the reduced uh, beta parameter, which um, uh, reflects the fatigue scatter, is lower. That means that uh, that the deviations and the fatigue scatter in case of um, uh, laser shock pinned uh, wells was. Uh, higher. So um, uh, that's then we had, um, investigated fracture surface of the laser shock um, pinned joints, and we found out that uh, there is a strong correlation between the um, fracture surface and res uh, generated residual stresses. So the crack initiated in the middle part of the joint where uh, tensile residual stresses prevail. So um, yeah, we're running out of time. The <coughs> last. Uh, methodology is um, uh, process parameters variation. We used uh, X-ray um, um, lateral X-ray analysis in order to um, uh, characterize the um, uh, weld uh, porosity, and we found out that uh, with increasing laser power, uh, there is a steep rise of um, uh, the porosity level. And then we use two parameter sets with low porosity level and high porosity level in order to see what's the effect of the amount of force on the fatigue limit. And surprisingly, we didn't find any difference, uh, probably. So um, there is some uh, slight deviations. However, we couldn't distinguish it uh, from fatigue scatter. So from the engineering point of view, there is no influence of laser beam welding process parameters on the fatigue limit of machine joint. Yeah, so that's the comparison of all the techniques that we used. And there's the final point. I would like to show you where the SEM images of the uh, fish eye uh, pattern that we typically observe in the high cycle fatigue regime of the machined or laser uh, remelted laser joints. So that's the typical um, very nice image of the fish eye with optically dark area and the close proximity to the pore and with the smooth area. And currently we're developing prediction models to predict the fatigue behavior um, of the um, joints with internal crack initiation and we try to uh, predict the behavior of shot cracks in the uh, optically dark area in, and uh, in the vacuum-like environment of internal cracks. So yeah, uh, as summarizing um, the results of our work, I can say that uh, the most effective technology uh, uh, um, has, uh, is the surface smoothening techniques like machining, but um, uh, the uh, highest potential has um, laser remelting. And we, uh, we can increase um, the fatigue limit even higher if we apply uh, mm -hmm. uh, the post weld heat treatment or uh, laser shock pinning. And we always observe fish eye fractures similar to additively manufactured components and other types of welding. Uh, as an um, outlook, uh, we in the future will combine laser remelting with laser pinning. And uh, I believe that by this methodology, we'll um, achieve the base material level of fatigue strength. So thank you for